Hello everyone and welcome back to that one playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2. I am Kyle once again and you find us back in the lovely village of Moonhaven. I say village but it's really just this small inn and tavern more to speak. Uh, you may notice there will be a few additions in today's episode that I did not record uh, because I decided to plant some rather large objects in certain cases, uh, smaller objects in other cases for scenery purposes. You'll notice there's a lot more flowers to kind of add some why are you not moving i want time going please time time can commence thank you continuing on with the intro yes there's lots of flowers i put some scenery in places to kind of start to pull the place together a little bit uh you'll notice our little area here with our flight control guy or owl salesman uh has his own little tent and area here for selling tickets i put a few more things just around there's some new scenery pieces like got this uh, cart that's actually full of vegetables and other valuable tradable goods. I put a little tree back here. We're going to have a little druid quest I threw back here. And then we've got this giant pillar that will be an ancient relic of the past that I'm not sure what to do with yet, but it will be incorporated in some way, shape, or form. So as I go through today, I'll try to point out some of the little scenery tidbits that I added in while we do some quest designing because we need to finish this place up. We need to make it so that Moonhaven can help to commence and, uh, Get people toward level eight i believe is what the goal is now now luckily if you just click anywhere on the train you can bring up this wonderful little window that allows us to go to the contents tab and within this you can see all of the things that you have put in that region good for a number of reasons one you can look at all the buildings that require pa uh, power uh, there's things that require um you know the connections through your network you can see your monster zones npcs and then it breaks down whether they are a quest giver a guard or I guess in this case just a guard. Then you've got your monster zones as well so you can kind of click on these and it'll kind of uh, showcase where they are. I don't know if this was always a feature or not where it would actually like take you to that location but I think it's actually pretty slick pretty cool um, I believe. Yeah, zone zone I don't think it has the elites but anyways you can zoom into all the little shops and stuff and find out exactly where they are in case you lost them they ran away from you obviously same goes for all the npcs so you just click on an npc boom you're there okay i need to go to my quest givers now i wish you could organize these a little bit differently uh note to the devs trevor trevor if you're listening i need you to categorize these by like i don't know if i could sort them by number of quests they have active total xp maybe would be another cool one any other ways that we could like uh you know filter this and order them in a, in a more uh, productive manner i suppose there i go being bougie and demanding again all right so now a lot of these i'll move this out of the way so i can see who i'm actually dealing with a lot of these i think uh i, I, well, I know that i've already created a lot of quests and stuff for them so uh, like this one we did last time there's five quests there already assigned so as you go through these like i i know which ones i've kind of done uh yeah that's that's hank we know hank esteemed fall steam some of these i should probably rename that would actually help me understand exactly which ones i've done so i could probably you know help myself out and organize them in that sense you know just use your brain go all right so there's arabelle obviously we know we did arabelle we gave her a name agent more morgun morgwen I don't know, you're just gonna be more Gwen now. And just, just so I don't screw that up, because my pronunciations are, you know, probably wrong. More, more Gwen, no, more Gwen, Gwen, Gwen. So it's, we'll use an E for that, more Gwen. That makes more sense to me. There we go, done. Was it, didn't I have a gnome guy over here? What happened to, oh, there he is, he's, oh, he's hiding. The stealthy little guy. Advisor Opsim, how about we'll just uh, say Professor? Now I got, I got myself second guessing whether or not Professor has two S's or not. It's like, it's like you know what's right, and if you were to just write it without thinking, you'd be fine. But as soon as you're thinking it and other people are watching, you, you just, you have no faith in yourself. And Death, oh yeah, Deathlock. <laughs> I remember commenting on how marvelous his name was. Fantastic stuff. Uh, you are, you had a too, too good of a name. Altar the Wise, how about... Uh, Altair, Altair Grainstein, because he owns a grain farm. No, it's this is real creative stuff here, folks. Stick around for more. Oh yeah, I added this little lovely tree up here. I should show you by the windmill. I thought it'd be nice to have like, you know, a lovely little, like, I don't, I don't know, something that blossoms and is pretty and has some flowers and whatnot. And uh, this is looking different for some reason. 
Can't figure out why. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I don't know why it's taking me this long to bring it up since it's such a big freaking deal for this game right now. But yeah, Dungeons is live, and I do technically have the update or the pre-update version of this running right now, meaning I could do the beta version of, of, uh, of Dungeons in Shatterstone. However, because of the way it works with the actual Steam updates, there was a warning on the game that said, uh, hey, if you plan on using those dungeons after the actual update goes live, they might disappear. So I've decided and elected not to do a dungeon in Shatterstone yet, but do not worry. Uh, if things have gone well, I'm hoping that uh, I already covered that in, in, a, in a live stream, hopefully. Hopefully it worked. If it didn't work, then I apologize for those of you who did not get the live stream. It wasn't on purpose. So yeah, things like this where I put like caves, so like this wolf, I plan on making that a dungeon. Real quick, other places I plan on doing dungeons because I think it's important to, to point out. Obviously, we've got the main part of the mountain here in Karak. That will be a dungeon 100%. In Brightwood itself, I plan on uh, the, the, uh, the, what was this? Uh, the Ruins of Harad. These are going to be a dungeon, probably the, the first dungeon in the entire game. The Trials of the Angari that we kind of built along the side here, that will be a dungeon. Uh, there will be at least one or two dungeons in Zephyr. Uh, the actual prison, this is going to be a dungeon. Going to be a fun one. Got some quests, uh, main quest line stuff that connects to Harad. That's going to connect to there. That's that's actually the reason those two are so close on the map together. There will be another dungeon in Zephyr, kind of with a more of a deserty theme to it, with some ancient -y ruins. And then, of course, like over in our major city, which is severely underdeveloped at the moment, and don't worry, we will do more here as time goes on. I plan on doing a couple dungeons in here as well. I think it'd be fun to do like some sewer system ones, some castle-y ones. All kinds of stuff for different levels, hopefully, uh, we can manage. So yeah, that's that's the dungeon spiel. Moving on! I don't remember if those flowers were there before I added them afterwards, but there's some nice flowers there now. Uh, what else did I add? I mean, those were already all there. That was pretty much... Oh, I think I added the little, uh... It's not a windmill, but it's like a wind directionally thingamabob... I don't know what they actually do. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure what that's used for. Oh, I remember. There were two big things. Uh, one... I put this nice little caravan that's trying to go this direction because uh, this province here is going to be like the major port for the capital city. So that's going to be obviously a big trade route. Lots of people are trying to get through clearance at the gate here. And then the other one, if we go up to our little wizardy tower here, I had some fun with this, okay? Put some rocks around it to make it a little look a little more uh, inviting, like it was actually built structure out of the rock here. I added some staircases and ladderways to kind of come up the side here. He's got a little little brick oven here sitting chilling out the side there don't don't ask me why it's sitting on wood that's probably not a good idea and then over on this side you've got a little little crane so he can bring up supplies if they're too big to carry and he's got his little kind of camp setup kind of like Max and Eddie had in Brightwood just a little outdoory camp setup with his tower up here he's got a little way to get up the ladder side there there's a door down at the bottom nice little Little support beams underneath this all and you got some little mushrooms and then you walk up through here you come up this way and you can go up the stairs and he's just chilling out over here ready to give you some quests all right now that we've killed half the episode explaining the things let's do the fun parts oh i forgot there was a little quest giver over here what did i put this guy here for i'm not sure do you have anything attached to you did i already build anything with you moldy plum massacre bandits no you are definitely a vanilla standard quest giver. I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember which quest giver the last episode ended on. I think it ended on like Deathlock the Strong maybe? Because in theory he would direct you to go up here, but also, no, maybe it didn't. I can't remember. Deathlock, I need to speak with you for a second. Dark Woods, warn the locals, bash the wolves, thrown to the wolves. Oh, and then I left one open. Yeah, because, well, I mean, two things can happen. I can either have him come over here, which would be productive. No, nope, no, nope, we're gonna have him go and send you into, uh, into the level eight stuff, I think. That's probably gonna be best case. Now, none of these questers over here, you, yeah, you have not been utilized. You have not been utilized. I know because I just created you. You over here behind and by the tree have not been utilized. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I put one here. Um, oh, I remember what I'm using him for. So yeah, there's a quest giver here. So that's one, two, th three, four. Uh, there's not one here, but I could potentially put one out here. There's five for this guy in here. 
by the little watchtower. Six, random dude I put over here. Don't ask me why, I don't recall. Seven, you over here. I don't think you've been utilized. Massacre the bandits, locate king. Nope, they definitely have not. That's seven, eight, I think. Uh, nine, eight or nine is our other wizard over here. Now this is advisor Amden. He is also an advisor just like advisor Maxonite. They are of the same rank and council of advisors to the empire of Salicaster. Now, what do I want to start with? Um, Buckets McGee, okay. Well, there's, a, there's enough quests that are going to direct people over to this location. So I can kind of just go different directions with each one of these. Now, obviously there's going to want to be a couple of tie-ins. Um, this whole region, while... Well, is on the road to Valkyrin. The road to Valkyrin is kind of the main quest, but I think Advisor Amden is going to have relations to that. So he over here is going to tie into stuff that goes on in the city. The uh, big crystally building I built uh, several episodes ago now, that's going to be kind of the main wizardy castle building. So he's going to connect to that. That's going to be main quest related because Maxonite is going to send you this direction. Some other main questy stuff maybe will come from the watchtower here. Everything else is probably going to be side quests. I think that's the case. Okay, so in regards to the things going on in our little township village here, um, I I think I want to take this quest uh, first. This is going to be a side quest that I only want those players to discover who go exploring and ending up finding it back here. Now, obviously, it's not that far off the beaten path. It wouldn't be that hard to find. It's also kind of why I wanted a landmark back here so players would migrate toward this area to begin with, and they will come across this lovely little quest back here. This is not going to be Squire someday. This will be Priestess Ella. Uh, no, I didn't want to get rid of that. Please give me your, your window back. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, we're not going to kill bandits. That's not a thing. Let's get rid of this one first. Let's redirect this one. Uh, yeah, so essentially what's going on here is she is trying to investigate who stole the life of a soul tree. Now, a soul tree, similar to the tree that I put over by the windmill that I discussed earlier, uh, they hold a magical essence to them. So she's, she's over here investigating why the soul trees are losing some of their power, or all of it in some cases. Now, she represents the Ashwin Druids of the Ashwin Forest, which will be a province we will we will build upon later. Now, she has a couple of theories. The first theory that she's got is we're going to direct her over to this area. Actually, she's already killing those bandits, isn't she? Yep, she already is. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted her to do was go kill, go kill those bandits because her assumption is that the bad druid over there, the evil druid over there, is the one that's responsible for taking it. However, that is not necessarily the case. We're gonna call this just Dark, dark Tidings. I don't think that's necessarily a good title. I just can't think of anything else right now. Uh, before I utilize the default rewards, I do need to check. So Hank had 15,000. What was the highest one, I think? I'm not really sure. More Gwen has 14,000. That's not that high, to be honest. Uh, Chancellor Yessa, he has 18,000. Or or they. I'm not really sure, you know, what their preference would be. So 18,000, that's pretty high. I imagine that's probably got to be the highest in the region because I don't think that uh, our boy Deathlock is going to be too much higher. Oh, he's 18,000 too. He doesn't even have uh, all the quests. Fantabulous. 8,000 is, is pretty good for one, one questeroni there that he had. Okay, so because this is, uh, let's see, has one level six quest. This is a six, seven zone, right? Yeah. So players are going to be level seven, hopefully, when they do this. This is, this, well, it should probably be fairly standard. The only ones that I can really direct to be higher based on difficulty of level would be if I sent you, sent you, sent the players somewhere where they were actually fighting level seven monsters. Because I'm sending them in this case to the level six bandits, that doesn't make much sense. So we'll just leave it as is, but I wanna make sure it's still beefy. Yeah, cause this is six, seven. Yeah, so at level six, XP needed 120,900. At level seven, 163,800. If I wanted to get, Gosh, how many quests? Uh, based on the scaling. Oh, wait, I should be able to figure this out pretty easy. Hold on. 163,800. Using the old calculator here. Hey, where'd she go? Please come here. You're saying 3,454. At that rate, it would take approximately 47 quests to get to level eight. If we were to keep it at the standard 3,454 that it is giving to each one of them, thus far in order to achieve 163,800. Video games, doing math. Okay, with that being said then, um, 163,000, if I wanted to do it in, gosh, what did I say? I had like eight quest givers, eight times five is about 40. Actually, that's 
that's not too far off if there's eight quest givers and they each gave 3,000 no that doesn't add up doesn't add up at all oh they each have five that's how I got to it 3,454 times five is 17,270 per quest giver times eight quest givers 1,000 or sorry 138,160 that's shy by uh, 25,000 or so. Be about one and a half more quest givers, meaning it'd be about nine and a half quest givers. Blarty blarty blar. Okay, the long and short of it is uh, basically gonna change this, right? No, I wanna, I wanna change this and I'm gonna make it, come on, highlight it, thank you. 5,000. Uh, and yeah, we'll just, we'll just start making sure there's gold attached to most of these quests too. All right, Dark Tidings, 5,000 uh, experiences O's. Kinda high maybe, maybe I should, nah, you know what? Screw it, we'll, we'll add more, more monster killing. I get 10. It like shrinks it? What the heck is going on here? If I go 16, does it? Nope, doesn't change. Thought I could maybe do more. Anyways. Okay, next quest. So, uh, 10 feels high. Let's, let's try 8. Let's just, just, just do 8. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and then she's gonna be like, okay, well, apparently it wasn't that evil druid over there. Let's go figure out if somebody else. There's some other druids over here I'd like you to go talk to. Now, we already had a druid for yonder. This one over here, when you get off of the balloon, potentially takes you over and she sends you to and i say she because they're all female assets you know in theory there would be male and female and potentially uh non-identifying uh assets for the druids and other characters but anyways yeah they take you over to this person who fidel i don't think yeah you don't have quests completed yet so multiple quest givers can take you to them that's fine that's not gonna break this system all right we're gonna add one no do not brutalize topazosaurs that is not not a thing don't do that come over here please and talk to this this chap and because you're just well this is just a walkie walk quest so just yeah just do the standard that's fine and then this one's gonna be like yeah i don't know just, just can't figure out why the magic was stolen from that clearly magical tree and i have nothing to do with it or okay so there's gonna be some suspicions obviously based on that uh response then i'm thinking it would be nice if we did a dungeon over here now obviously i said i'm not doing the dungeons right now because update isn't official on the actual uh, non-beta version of the game are all those trees slanted i think all those trees are slanted otherwise there is some weird optical illusion going on I, they must have been slanted when i placed them and i must have been like looking at it from this way? Yep, I think I broke all the trees. We'll just say there's lots of wind gusts that come through this region. You know, it comes up down over the mountain and it creates big wind gusts and the trees on the on that side get uh, get blown. You know, it's a Santa Ana's or something. Nothing like getting sidetracked with absolutely stupid stuff. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna have a dungeon. Um, I can't remember what was in the dungeons. Um, did take a look at it. I can't remember what the assets were like. I think you can do like a normal building style because I'd like to do a normal building style. You know, maybe maybe I could make this building bigger. That's a good idea. I'm completely doing something right now that doesn't actually benefit this episode, but you know, or you're all gonna forgive me later when we do some cool things at a point in time that isn't this point in time. But really all I wanna do here is make this building look more or less bigger than it actually is yeah there we go and then and then when we do dungeons we'll just make it so that like you know if it, it feels big you know it's, it's it's like you know some crazy stuff building looks certain size you go inside all of a sudden it's way bigger optical illusion something 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 video game dimensions okay so for now i think what we'll do is we'll take uh priestess ella's suspicions and uh, I need to change these quest names. Why are there so many of them now? Stop making extra quests. You're not allowed to make quests on your own. That's that's against the rules. Okay, you're gonna, where'd the building go? There it is. You can go over here and investigate that. Now, I, granted, we're just making them go back and forth. I get that, but you know, people will get over it. Bring me my shoes, no? Go talk to the land lord. Landlord's one word, right? I think it is, and I'm pretty sure it's a proper noun. Uh, and not bring me the princess. Investigate. Uh, no, actually, we'll just say suspicious. That's how you spell suspicious. Today is going to be another episode where the comments are filled with guile. You spelled that wrong. Type of comments. What can you do? Suspicious feelings. And we'll make this one gigantor in terms of uh, oh, the thing. Yeah, there. I feel like buttons have changed, and I'm not. I'm not used to it. gigantor. 
10,000 experience. 1,000 gold. No, not 1,000 gold. That's ridiculous, Kyle. Come on. 100 gold is fine. All right, so we'll we'll build a dungeon some somehow there. I know dungeons have to have certain entrances, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work. Okay, so this person... Oh, I got an idea, actually, because... I can, I can leave this person's last quest open too and they can take you to the other province. Or maybe not. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. No, don't find a left sock. We're going to... We're going to have them go over here to the other soul tree. Uh, this is a soul tree, but the people who own the land don't actually know it's a soul tree. Now, I don't think there's anything I can click on over here. So I'm just going to have them go to a farm hand just because I, I don't have anything else for them to quest. So this is going to be called the root of it because it's, I feel like that's, that's a clever thing. It's a, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, never mind. I'll just keep playing video games by myself. All right, 25 gold for that one. Uh, good five grand experience. This is going to be, yeah, 20,000 plus. That's good. If I keep that up, then it's going to be like eight quest givers. And then we'll add another one here. I, I think, yeah, we'll add that to kind of take you to the other province. Cause I want to make sure there's enough interaction that takes you up there. You don't necessarily have to do the main quest stuff. You can just be like, I'm going to go lollygagging and figure out other stuff going on in other regions and whatnot. But anyways, you're going to go to the roots of that tree and very much like uh, a lot of tree quests in other games, you're going to borrow some of the essence from a healthy tree and bring it back over to this one to hopefully try and revive, uh, you know, the magical properties that were stolen from it. And you'll make little priestess Ella very happy. Okay, other stuff we can do over here. Um, Now, our boy, boy right here. No, no, no. You are none other than the legendary Frank Beans once again. You see, Frank Beans, the traveling merchant, he just shows up wherever you need him. You show up in this province, you got Frank Beans. You go somewhere else, hey look, Frank Beans happens to be there too because he's Frank Beans, the traveling merchant. The actual person named Frank Beans who once commented on one of my videos asking to be named a character probably had no idea I was going to go to this level of obsession about it. Frank Beans is going to teach you the ways of capitalism. Frank Beans is going to need you to run a couple of errands for him. He needs you to go over to the tavern and uh, quickly get some change. He needs some exchange of some large bills so he can make some, some change for people coming, uh, buying in goods. Uh, he has lots of gold. He needs it broken down into silver and copper coins as well. Just do a small exchange. Now, if you help Frank Beans out, he's gonna he's gonna dish out the experience. Uh, he's not really gonna give you much in terms of gold because you don't get rich giving it away for free. Actually, you don't get rich giving it away pretty much. I mean, unless you are rich and you want to give it away, you can always give it away to me. I'll take it. All right, next quest. Uh, then he's gonna have you. He needs a he needs a little delivery guy. He's kind of like the Amazon Prime of the region. So he needs you to go over to uh, here to this building and he's going to have you drop off a new collar for their pet topazosaur. Collar for Larry. Another 5,000 experience and just, just one, just one gold. And then we should name this topazosaur Larry because that just sounds right. Larry the topazosaur. Now the next thing Frank Beans needs you to do is not defeat a topazosaur. He needs you to do some marketing for him. So he needs you to go over to uh, here and he wants you to go to this quest giver, which is another way that we can get them to interact with each other. And he's going to say, be social. It's good media. You see what I did there? Maybe, sort of, kind of. And he's going to give you a 5,000 and... One gold. And then he needs you to do some sales over here. So he'll have you go over to this house way over here. It's going to be called sales commission. And uh, we'll say maybe there's like, you know, more in-depth conversation that goes on over here. And if you can get somebody to purchase things uh, from Bank Beans, he'll give you a commission. He'll give you a wonderful commission of an extra gold so you get two this time and then the last quest we need frank beans to do is uh he'll just send you over to the marketplace in the main city here so he'll send you over to this little shop and that's kind of one of his uh his other little franchises he's got uh, developed over there in the main city. Call this back to HQ. And one fantastic gold. Five. No, not 50,000. That's too much. 5,000 experience. And now he's taught you about capitalism, meaning he ain't gonna give you any money because that's how he maintains his own wealth by, you know, getting people to do things for him. I believe there might be a message in here for all of us. If anything, I feel like I need to ask for a raise at my job. Wait, how much experience was that? I feel like that's got to be enough. Oh, yeah, boatload? 25,000. Good. Perfect. Fantastic. Esteemed Ivar. Okay, so let's do some fun quests here. Uh, I feel like we could use, I think we could use some more combat somewhere. I don't know if this is the guy to do it. Now, he is the flight path guy, so I have a feeling, hmm, I, I got an idea. I got an idea, but I got to make sure it's possible here. Okay, if I make some bandits and I make them um, level seven, and I put them, oh, I was hoping I could get them higher up on the hill there. We'll kind of go like that. It'd be like too obvious, but I need them to be effective. 
I mean, granted, they're right outside the castle, so I feel like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll with it. This is gonna be a thing. Okay, I'm not gonna have him do that yet, because that's, that's a far walk, uh, short drink of water. Okay, he needs you to, uh, to figure out why there is no hay coming to uh, feed his owls, and that's because their boy Hank here and, and, uh, our Topazosaur Carl are chilling out on the road, so... He's gonna have you go check on the delivery. That will be the first thing. This is gonna be called radio silence. And then you're gonna look at him and go, what the heck is a radio? Cause that's a thing that doesn't exist here. All right, then uh, after he figures out that there's a delay, he's gonna be like, all right, well, we need to feed these, we need to feed these lovely uh, owls somehow. Now, granted, now I know that Hank was on his way to the main city. That was part of the quest for that, but he's gonna make, he was making a short delivery here on his way. We're just gonna say that. So he needs some emergency, uh, a, I'm assuming, I don't, owls don't eat hay, owls are predatory birds. Anyways, maybe there's a delivery of mice with it too. Maybe the mice just live inside everything. He's gonna have you come over here and see if you could purchase something like, you know, kind of short notice from one of these merchants. Side deals. And then he's gonna say that uh, some of the owls have been shot along the uh, a road and you're gonna have to figure out why, or they've been hurt. You're not really sure why they've been hurt. Uh, there's not really anything along here that could cause a threat. There's only topazosaurs that he knows of. So he's going to have you come over and talk to our friend over here, the wizard. And that will introduce you to this quest, uh, which is a good idea to do, I think. Call this moving targets. And then that's going to lead you to find that, in fact, the, the dealings that are going on here are from the bandits along here. They're going to be hiding in some trees. I'll make some trees along here so that they're really, really hidden. Uh, and then that way... Oh, look at these guys. Are you guys going to fight up here? Please tell me you guys are about to fight these bandits because there's no way you're a high enough level. Level two, level three, level three. Yeah, where are you going? What's happening here? Nope, they're just they're just walking up a hill. Nope, now they're going this way. Now they're going this way. And, oh, they're going to try and do it. They're going to grind up on some level level seven bandits. Oh, they, they froze him. He's like T-posing. Oh, there he goes. Why am I stuck on this thing? Go away. How's this guy doing? Oh, dude. He's got some health, boys. He has got some health. I don't know how these guys are doing. Total health. Oh, these are fine. What the heck? He's fine on mana. Is the bandit doing any damage? Who is it attacking? That guy's got a little bit of health missing. This band. I sw Oh, no, okay. One of them died. I wasn't paying attention. One of them's definitely dead. We got two DPSs and two tanks. I mean, that kind of works, but you're, you you gotta have the. Oh, yeah. The wizard is definitely gonna die. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not worried about this. You guys are dumb. These are level seven bandits. Like, yeah. You, you have four DPS characters. Of course, you're not gonna be able to tank the shots from this. Well, I'm realizing now he's not stuck. He's just like charging an ability. What ability is that? Oh, that's a Caltrops ability that's doing that. It's like, why is there blood falling from the sky? 1.6 damage over 4 seconds. What's the cast time on that? 4 second cast time, wow. Yeah, damage over time, 1.2. At uh, a level 7, that is dealing... Still dealing only 1.6. Why is that the case? Oh, tooltip level. Oh, sorry. Oh, this was the level it's available at. I think that was supposed to be 3. Maybe it's 4. Don't want to don't botch it up. Anyways, level 7, 18.2 damage. That's probably like the majority of the health bar on level two characters at that point. Okay, I don't feel bad. Those guys are dumb. Can't go, you can't go farming in areas, you know, three to four times your level. No forgiveness there. Don't work. Don't work. Okay, yeah, so he's culling the bandits or he's cleaning up. Yeah, call, call the bandits. That's, that's an A-OK -okay thing. Yeah, five is fine. XP, 4,000. Okay, and you got to kill a few of them. Um, I'm going to make it six... Plus what you get for killing all the banditos. Uh, and then the last one, I don't really want to make people go too far. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Because I haven't let it happen thus far, we're just going to use what the, the game gives me. And he wants you to locate more beer. Go to the tavern. Locate the beer. And he's going to give you some experience to go for it. He says, you know what? Next drink's on me. Boom. Bada bing. All right. So there's a certain number of quests. All right, we're at 72,000, give or take. That should not be too much trouble to do. Uh, we're almost halfway, which is good. Okay, we've got uh, Fidal. Is this Fidal? It is Fi Fidal. Fidal? I think it's Fidal. Okay, Fidal is doing some shady shenanigans. Now, he is responsible for the stealings of the Soul Tree's power over here. So really what's going to happen is we're, we're going to make this kind of like the quest lines going on at the same time. So He's going to have you come over here and he's be like, yo, there's a tree over here and I need you to just cut a branch off of it for me. I can't click on the tree. That's just why I did that. So, anywho, 
we're just gonna have you go to the building and he's gonna say yeah i need you to go cut off the, the branch over there because i'm not doing anything shady and he's gonna pay you a ton not, not a thousand again thank you uh and then you end up being the person that you know is responsible for the tree breaking so you'll have the opportunity to fix it again if you do the side quest involving priestess ella and he's just gonna say i need i need you to help me just prune 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 a little tree over there not really gonna be uh or telling as to what he's actually doing and then the next one he's gonna have you go visit all of his buddy old pals here so uh, i had the one quest giver yep this one over here but one quest to go there i'm gonna call this miracles growing number one and then the other one will be miracles growing oops, miracles growing number two so let me copy and paste it will yay miracles growing number two is going to go over to this other quest giver so then you're attached to both of the other quest givers over here oh i forgot i actually had that one over there i knew there was a quest giver there but i also did remember to point it out earlier no i changed the name again why why would you do that why i i literally gave you a name change where i want you to go and then you're like yo i don't have that name anymore don't call me that okay so go to Hinran, and that'll attach to those quests, and he's basically taking the magic from the pruned tree of the soul tree, and he's spreading the magic of the soul tree on his own crops so that they can continue to grow for profit's sake, and not for the sake of wonderful, beautiful trees that just want to grow and be happy. Uh, Massacre the... That's exactly what I want him to do, because he's going to go get some magic from the Topazosaurs, and because we already had a quest earlier to get the lower level ones... He's going to send you to the higher level ones. I'll do a lot, so this is a nice, fun experience booster put this at a good eight he's gonna pay you some gold so uh some bad juju in terms of the uh, morals going on here but uh lots of experience of gold if you're interested and then the last thing he'll have you do is send you over to the wizard tower and this will be a we'll make this a big juicy one it'll be like a stealthy bad guy mission bad dealings over here more gold we'll say a pinch of ever dust not dush a pinch of ever dust so he's gonna have Potentially some Everstone fragments over here, because all the wizards are investigating the Everstones, or at least we will find out that they are. And he, they want to take some some magical source energy from there. Okay, so I so said we were at uh, about 70,000 on the old experience bar and added 30, so we're at 100. We need 60,000 to go. We got a uh, good four more quest givers utilized. I would like to focus on this guy right here. All right, so this is going to be more some more administrative stuff for the Empire. If you feel like doing that sort of thing, he's going to have you come over here and figure out why there is a line that is so dang long. Hold up. You're going to go figure out why there's a hold up. They're going to come back and tell you, look, uh, we can't let anybody through. There's some issues at the docks. Something, uh, an emergency has happened of sorts. Can't let anybody through until the administration figures out uh, what's going on. Potentially there was some kind of attack. So he's going to have you go up here to our boy, our boy Deathlock, and ask if we can get uh, caravans to go a separate route. All this reroute. And uh, unfortunately, though, as people will soon learn, there is not really a legitimate way to go around here. They could potentially gather a ship from a different side of the island and take it around to there. But um, I should say island. It's more of a more of a continent, Kyle. Definitely more of a continent. So it's not really the most effective path to take. It's gonna take way too long. So they'd have to potentially even go like all the way around that way. So we'll have them go talk to Deathlock. Actually, you know what? That makes more sense if he's saying go to Deathlock so they can tell the caravans before they make their way down this direction if anyone's doing trade that they're gonna have to go the other route toward the main city and then around the to the port on the uh, other side. I don't know, I'm sure they'll figure it out. They're smart people. Also, this guy's name is King Ansel. He is now Commander Ansel. I don't know if that's how I spelled his name. Rewind the video, tell me if I'm an idiot. Leave your hatred in the comments. All right, then he wants you to kind of clear the roads. Now, I did have this quest giver guy here because people are not able to get through here, but if you have the right credentials, say like a military credential, you could get through, so you basically what's going to happen here is you can either get a military passport credential to go into the port section if you complete all of commander ansel's quests or you can kind of go through again a little shady dealings back back alleyway this guy will help you forge some documents to get in as well so you can kind of choose pick your poison more or less i like I like games with choice so i'm gonna put some banditos those might be a little close again but eh it's a point across those are yeah those are level seven so that's good i want you to basically clear out make the roads safer so thin the bandits make sure you do that to kind of help people out you know we'll pay you pretty pretty decently too you will say 50 gold you're doing 
doing some military mercenary work. All right, and then uh, he needs uh, some additional supplies for the men, and by additional supplies for the men, he wants you to go get some beer for the homies. Yeah, if you go to the tavern, and bring back some extra extra drinks. That would be very nice, very nice indeed. And that's uh, that's worth you know less experience maybe, but he's gonna throw you a tip because they boy they have been busy out here protecting the uh, fronts of the empire. We just want to relax and chill. And then he's going to give you a way to get over here. He's going to give you some military credentials so you can pass through the gate if you so decide to do that. Don't search for a sock. That's not that's not how this works. Actually, that would be funny. Why did he give me a sock? Why did he give me a sock? Yeah, he's going to give you a sock because maybe, I don't know, Commander Ansel might be a little, a little loose in the noggin, as they say. And he gives you a sock and says that's the secret passcode to get through the gate. For some reason it is. No one will ever suspect that the military credentials to get through the gate is a dirty sock from your commander. No one will ever think to forge that because they'll never believe it's a real thing. All right, so if you decide not to do that, uh, then you're going to come over to this guy and he's going to be like, oh, I see you're trying to get in the, uh, the old door over here. Well, let me tell you something. I need you to go get me some parchment and some shenanigans stuff from, uh, shenanigans stuff. He needs, he needs a pen and paper, all right? Pen and paper. And the pen, the pen is meatier than the salad, or mightier than the sword, as some might say, but uh, definitely, definitely meatier than the salad. Code. It's code for something, I'm sure. I'm just kind of dumping a lot of experience on this, because I, I really, all these quests in all these provinces, I just don't want people to get stuck. I don't want players to get stuck in there, like they have been in uh, previous episodes. All right, and he's going to have you do some fighting, too. Maybe there should be like a, a rival group of bandits, but I really have no idea where, oh yeah, well, there's bandits over here. I could send people here for the third time. Why? Why not? Go, go kill the rival bandits. I don't, I don't know. And I kind of ran out of ideas with this one a little bit. He wants you to go mess up the rival bandit group. And if you mess up the rival bandit group, then he'll help you out. Uh, bring me even more beer. And it's pointed at the tavern. You know what? Everyone in this region is an alcoholic, apparently. They all just want you to go get them beer. I'm leaving that one because at this point, I love it. I'm, I'm down. Now everyone's going to think I'm an alcoholic. Great. He's going to have you go over and uh, I want him to go over here. Basically, I, I don't, I, I would want him to communicate with these bandits because I feel like he's on the same side as those bandits. I'm going to put it over here for now. Kind of need like a, I put a, like a bandit camp back here. Ooh, that's a good idea. Actually, let's do that. Let's go. What the, what button am I looking for? NPCs, quest giver. Where's the bandito? There he is. Boop. Too close to obstruction. Oh, because it's considered outside of the region, huh? All right, well, you know, if you're going to be that way, game, be that way. All right, where's the line then? Can I put him up here? Where, where? Okay, I can sign of see. Man, that's frustrating. Okay, I'll put him there. Not, not not necessarily where I wanted to put him. Pull him way over here to this guy. Make him up here. There we go. All right, so he'll go attach to that quest line. Basically, he's going to command them to keep firing on the owls that are flying by because he wants to prevent people from going that direction and he wants people to go this way so that essentially they buy forged papers from him. And if they can do that, they can start to uh, continue to build their little bandit economy. Assuming bandit economy sort of thing. We'll just call this bandit economy because it just... Okay, it just came to me. And then the last one, multi plump. Uh, let's delete it for now, but he, essentially we'll have him go somewhere into the uh, the port area, and then that'll lead to like some underground shady dealings with uh, with banditos there as well. We could actually do a another dungeon. I don't know if there's a limit to the number of dungeons you can put in a specific region, but we could always make like a bandit dungeon too, just to kind of have some extra fun combat-y things to do. Because that's one thing I'm realizing is like, you can kind of build some storylines in this game if you got the imagination for it. But in terms of building like playable game, obviously no one's actually playing this, but you know, you gotta have a good amount of combat to keep people engaged for the most part. And it's hard to do without just filling regions with way too many combat zones. Advisor Acid. No, we're just going to call you uh, Acid because reasons. All right, you are kind of doing shady business uh, with the other guy, Falstad. I'm going to have this guy go and do some more fighting of those thingamajigs, the Topazosaurs. Does Topazosaurus have 
two S's in it. Is that a thing? Pazasaurus. Definitely has one S. Why does this, why does the quest have two S's? To Pazasaurus's. Oh, I bet it did it to make it plural. The game just added an S to make it plural, but it doesn't understand, you know, basic rules of grammar, I suppose. In English, at least. Trevor's Australian, I believe. So maybe they don't speak real English there or something. Please, please don't at me. Okay, so to beat the Topaz that's what we're gonna call it. Topaza Topazasauri. We're gonna make everyone everyone angry at this. It's like octopi, you know? Alright, Massacre of the Bandits. You know what? Yeah, this guy's job is just you're just you know what? Just kill everyone. Oh, that's a kill. Kill everything. Go kill these bandits. Your next quest is go go. No, don't get shoes. Nothing about shoes. Go kill these topazosaurs. And then I was just complaining how there's not enough combat in this whatsoever. Go go kill some wolves. The game is saving at an awkward time when I'm trying to be direct. And then and then you know what? Yep. It was meant to be, folks. Four combat quests. And then we ended with, this guy wants a beer too. Everybody in this region, everybody gets a beer. It's a good time. Look at that. Nice, easy 18,000. This is like for the players who are like frustrated at this point, And they're just like, why don't I get to kill anything? And then they get to him and he's just like, hey, I want you to kill everything for me. Could you do that real quick? And then you get to sit at the tavern and have a nice uh, chill out beer. All right, and then Hinrun. Hinrun's actually an intelligent chap. He doesn't want you to just uh, murder everything. No, he's going to say, you know, you should use your charismatic ways that I will teach you. And you should come over to this wizard and you should tell him with your Jedi mind tricks. There is nothing to worry about. We are not doing any illegal shitty business over here. Not the... Oh my gosh, it was going to be perfect. It was going to be not the druids you're looking for. But I can't put an R. I literally ran out of characters because I wanted to have proper grammar on your if I if I change this and make it just like that like can I can I put the R there okay I know it's grammatically technically oh it even irritates me actually looking at it for how much I'm terrible at spelling like not having that apostrophe there is giving me the shakes a little bit but I need it for that R now it's the perfectly named quest not the druids you're looking I mean it's, it's, it's just so good so so good so good. Anyways, moving on. So we're gonna have you go over there. Destroy the kobolds. Why do these keep being called kobolds? They're definitely called harvesters. We've been through this already. I don't, I don't get it. And he is gonna say, uh, we need some special materials from the giant topazosaur. So you're gonna you're gonna interview Pappy. Now you better go interview him. Not really sure what that mean what I meant by that. I'm I'm sorry if that came across weird. Is that is that one one two? Yeah, that's ten thousand. My eyeballs weren't working there for a second. And a hundred gold ronies. So uh, go go to Pete Pappy. You're probably gonna need a party to do that, which is fine. And then uh, you're gonna need to help him harvest and extract um, some of I don't know extract. I guess you're extracting the extract. Whatever you get out of these corrupting vines, because these are the same corrupting vines uh, that we saw growing in uh, in uh, Brightwood. So. You're gonna take that and you're gonna bring it over to the main household and they're gonna do some shady shenanigans which is what you're gonna figure out and discover if you do the quest line that will eventually attach a uh, a dungeon to over there i think that'd be quite nice uh not too much experience pretty good amount because i am dumb we're gonna call this acting extract like i just said because it's a thing and then you're gonna need to take it somewhere very far away because they are the reasoning behind this tower so you're gonna take it over to this everstone tower that we placed for parts of story purposes in the future but it is a corrupted tower because they are putting the vines and evil upon it and uh, we'll have some really cool fun quests we'll build out over in that region at some point so he sends you over there basically it's a delivery to go send some more extracted corruption to that area to help out their evil doings on that side of the field and we're gonna make that pretty pretty big that is uh it says six thousand we'll just make it another ten thousand two hundred fifty gold so nice big one locate the king nope that is not what it is our future secured trying to build their power and wealth through evil magics okay i'm not saying that that's complete by any stretch but that's a pretty good chunk i think that will actually get them the level so now we get to kind of focus on some uh, some stuff here with advisor amden okay so do not thin the topazosaurus he likes the topazosaurus the topazosaurus are his friend uh first of all he lost his glasses so i uh, Help him find lost specs. Perfect. So you're gonna go help him find his specs. And then, um, I think it'd be nice if he did like a little fun, like kind of gather some little magical thingy thingies. So he's gonna take you, I feel like, over to the a soul tree as well. Now, obviously, there are not a lot of working soul trees around here. So we're gonna have uh, him take you over here too to just talk to some random stranger. Soul tree's blessing because, uh, you know, He's cute like that. He likes to do the little magical thingies and, and 
not not like in a prayer deity type fashion but you know he's he wants you to be one with the magics in the world around you okay so you're gonna do that and then uh i think i want him to also take you to tower here so in my head at least like with quests like this he would say go to the go to the the soul tree and then when you go to the soul tree the soul tree would then update your quest to then go to the tower there we're gonna call this ancient eyes so you're going to that tower that has some kind of ancient uh, ancient viewing power built within it all right then he's gonna send you we'll have you him send you over to the tower because at this point you have gone to him you've brought the everstone shards that advisor maxonite gave to you advisor maxonite is trying to figure out why the sh the stone within brightwood shattered and blew up and caused the devastation that was around it they're trying to figure out if the other Evastones are going to do that as well. And they are scattered around the region, uh, kind of all around Nethador, the entire series of continents. And I showcased a little bit, a few spots. So there's one down here on the southern end of the peninsula. Uh, there's one in the, the Angari region, which we will eventually build. There's the one in Brightwood. There's the one up here in this region that is the Corrupted One. The next one in the chain is actually floating out on an island here. And then they continue up as I stated in previous episodes, along this northern isle. So they kind of form, at least for the time being, a crescent on the eastern half of the map. And they are trying to solve the mystery as to why that's happening. Now, you'll notice I use the same asset on the castle here that is going to be kind of the Sorcerer's Academy or whatever. So I want to have him send you over here because you got to go talk to somebody here. And that's why I actually put the elementalist, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, teacher? 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 What is it? Trainer, that's the word, trainer. It's so embarrassing, I swear, this never doesn't normally happen. Anyways, that's that's the Sorcerer's kind of academy. That's where all the advisors hang out. He's gonna take it over there and be like, okay, well, this proves some of my theories that the Everstones, they hold a greater power and purpose, and the towers themselves actually have a reason for why they were built in the exact locations that they were built. And if one of them breaks, we need to figure out one, why it broke, and what may be the uh, kind of consequences of that happening. Well, that's kind of actually what our main quest is gonna be trying to figure out. And this will be called Shattered Stones because it's kind of like that, that culmination of act one of the game. Act one being like, there's a problem. We don't know what's going on. And then you're gonna arrive at the academy and you're gonna kind of get a spiel of what's going on. And because this is also kind of the culmination of that uh, road to Valkrin and the reasoning behind the game in general, as far as what the main quest line is gonna curtail, we're gonna make this a boatload of experience, 15,000. And then naturally, because this, uh, this region is just uh, interesting in it, the way it's designed, is uh, he's gonna say, hey, uh, you wanna come with me over to the tavern real quick? We'll, we'll like, you know, We'll grab a drink and then you start to realize by the end of this you've had way too many drinks with way too many people in this region and you're starting to feel a little fuzzy and you may stay away from moonhaven in the future all right so another thirty-one thousand experience that from from just a quest perspective this is going to get all of our players to level eight now all of these quests not all of them but all the ones that are combat based that take you to fight monsters are going to have even more than that so in theory this this region is done quest line wise uh, experience wise it's done. Now, I can always add more quests, we'll add dungeons, uh, but in terms of knowing that players will progress, bada bing, bada boom. Now, with that being said, I want to take the game in a different direction. Now, that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to change anything that I've done thus far. I'm not going to redo anything. I'm not going to retcon stuff that I've already established in the lore of Shatterstone. But so far, we have been taking the direction of Road to Valkyrie. We went through Zephyr to Karak, over to Moonhaven, over to the main capital of Valkyrie itself, which we will still continue to build in the future, I promise. One of the other regions that I talked about early on, or a different direction we could go, was one that I've been wanting to return to for quite some time. It's a region in which I feel like there's a lot more we can dive into in terms of side quests, things that are going on politically in this universe that I'm creating and also one that kind of pertains is also still connecting to the main storyline because we do have one of these Shatterstone Towers located in Angalore. Now we've had two regions here that I've established. We're going to have a port section here and this will kind of be the main capital city of Angalore itself where our Angari Rangers are going to be located from and the river here down in Eastwash is actually going to be kind of the borderline between Angalore and the Salacaster Empire. From an in-game faction standpoint, obviously they are allied. The players from either one of those factions don't actually fight each other, but there's a lot of internal conflict between the two, at least on the back side of things that isn't really seen politically, it's not stable. And I would like us to explore that next. So without further ado, future episodes are going to transition to that storyline the rise of the Angari. 
Until then, I am Kyle, this has been That One Playthrough of MMORPG Tycoon 2, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Have a wonderful day.